Starting a home care business in 2024 is much easier than you think. I'm going to walk you through the must knows of what you would need to know on starting up your home care agency. And let's dive in. So if you've ever thought about starting up your own home care business, we are going to dive into the world of entrepreneurship and the thriving industry of home care. So did you know that the demand for home care is on the rise? I think most people know that the silver tsunami is what they call it is here. We're uh, really at the beginning of it. It's it's on the rise and you know, the global healthcare market is expected to reach 515.6 billion in 2027, growing at a compound annual rate of 7.9% from 2020 to 2027. Yeah, I'm gonna jump in here and talk about what it looks like to run a home care agency. Just an overview and like the key seven things that you would need to really kind of think about on running a home care business and I'll highlight a success story of one of our clients. So for those of you that do not know me, my name is Scott McKenzie and I am the founder of home care agency blueprint and also golden age companions. I initially have run and operated a home care agency out of Irvine, California called golden age companions since 2011. And we have generated over $8 million of total revenue. And now I work full time with Home Care Agency Blueprint to help others across the US start and scale their very own home care businesses. So, if you're interested in learning more about our program, there's a booking link in the description below and you could book there. And yeah, I'll, I'll get right to it here. So, you know, the first thing is, is research and planning. That is something that, of course, this is like obvious, but you always want to research your area of where you're looking to dive into the market for your home care business. So, you know, conducting a thorough market research, you know, identify the demographics. So, for example, you know, obviously there's got to be either a high elderly population or people who have disabilities. That is where, you know, maybe where people retire or if there's an area in your county um, or even outside of your county that has a high population of seniors or th those that need care, um, that obviously would be a good thing to jump into as far as providing services for them. The other thing is, you know, just the basics is pretty much you're providing for home care. You know, it's personal care, hygiene assistance, companionship, transportation assistance, um, anything non-medical. So like IV injections or medication management is not included in non-medical. If you're looking at doing a home health business, you are allowed to do IV injections and wound care and things like that. The beauty with non-medical home care though, is that you can still be providing a large amount of hours per week. So for example, we have some clients at Golden Age Companions that are 12 hour shifts, you know, seven days a week. We even have 24 hour cases. So those are shifts that are ideal because, you know, the they're they're lucrative, but then you're also making a huge impact on the family on providing, you know, multiple caregivers to take care of their loved one. And then the other thing is is creating a detailed business plan outlining your services. So you know, your price and strategy, target market, of course, is in there, financial projections. You want to have a roadmap on what it looks like to launch your business and kind of like where you're going. And I always encourage you to write down even like the vision that you have for the company, you know, what you want to look like in a year, two years, three years, five years from now. So the second thing here is licensing and certification. You'll definitely need to know what licensing is required per state. So whatever state you're in, there are specific requirements that you've got to go through to get this license. Don't let this be daunting for you. It's it's just typical regulations and um, it's a way to keep 
the senior and uh, disability population, the people that are getting these services to keep them safe. And it's good that these regulations are there because it keeps every agency really in line to make sure that they're following protocol. So essentially your home care agency license could take anywhere from as, as quick as a month when you apply for it up to six months, even like I know the state of New York is a year and they don't always even have it available that you can apply. So um, it just depends on the, the state. And then the third thing is, is staffing. So, you know, hiring the right staff is, is a really important thing. You want to make sure that you have quality caregivers and you're really taking the due diligence to take the time to know the caregiver, meet them in person, you know, have them fill out skill assessments and it's, it's a good thing to have them go through a lot of paperwork as well. Even if you're adding different like quizzes and tests and things like that, when you're hiring the caregiver, that is a good thing because you're basically letting them jump through hoops to get hired with you. And then you're holding a higher standard with your business. And it's important because basically if, if they're not willing to show up to that, say second interview or fill out that, uh, that assessment, um, say it's a personality assessment, then they're probably not a good hire. You know, they're probably not someone you want to send into the home. If they're willing to go through all the protocols, then you're most likely going to have someone that is going to be a quality caregiver as well. That's just what I've learned over the past 12 years of doing this. So, um, yeah. And then of course your office staff, that's the other thing is when, once, when you start to get as a larger agency, it's your, you know, you got to hire a case manager, um, someone who is a staffing coordinator. So essentially your case manager will be the person to go out and do the in-home assessments and meet the families. And then they're also the person to introduce the caregiver to the family. And then you have your staffing coordinator, which is the one to recruit and hire the caregivers. So your case manager and your staffing coordinator work together. And then you as a business owner can be kind of wearing multiple hats. Maybe you can jump over to an assessment when you need to be doing that, uh, even meeting the caregivers structuring some trainings like group trainings for camaraderie that's that's good on just culture for your business so that's that's on the staffing side now setting up operations you want to be sure to set up an office space uh, most states do require that you need to have a physical office the way that you can do this is get a small executive office you can likely find a private executive office in a pretty nice area for anywhere from two to five hundred dollars a month there is a way of doing that you just got to research it online and then what i recommend in this this kind of like idea of getting your offices once when you set up your first executive office ask the building manager wherever you move into what the growth possibilities are there so if you want to move up as your business scales and gets larger and you need a larger office space you can keep that same address and just move in the same building so that's just kind of a, a side tip um, as far as the rest of setting up your operations it's you know making sure that you have proper software so like a crm a scheduling software that is in place to keep track of the caregiver schedule um, and then make sure that you are able to that same software can be used for invoicing and payroll calculation and you know electronic invoicing and things like that the fifth thing is is our marketing strategies so that is you know really implementing an effective marketing strategy this is your seo you know, for your website, having a, a quality, robust website, this also comes, um, what comes in play here is your branding. It's, it's good to invest in a quality designer to design a quality brand. Keep in mind everything I'm talking about in this video, we at Home Care Agency Blueprint, we do all of this. We're a full-fledged service. We do the branding. We help with the licensing. We have all the forms, the templates, everything to basically start scale and grow a home care business so we have different packages so we make it affordable pretty much for everybody you know all the way up to like a done for you package that we just literally set up your agency for you and and uh 
you know, almost like hand it to you and then you are, it's up to you to run it and grow it. So, so yeah, I mean the marketing stuff that is also like social media marketing, um, online advertising, you wouldn't want to start the online advertising right away. You know, once we get some revenue coming in, you could, you could look into that. But what I highly recommend is joining your local chamber of commerce, just get the basic membership you can, you know, and they will link you on with other events going on and, you know, kind of rub shoulders with people in the community, start handing out your business cards, your brochures, really just get your name out there and get people to know you and trust you. And that's going to really help because when you go to one of these uh, community events, especially if they're healthcare based, you can meet some case managers, some social workers. Sometimes it just takes somebody getting to know you and they like you specifically. They like what you have to say. Even if they know that you're a newer company, they will be willing to refer you business. Now, keep in mind, nobody (laughs) wants to hear this, but it takes seven to 11 times to meet somebody and go back, say if this is a facility or just generally a new business relationship for them to really remember you and trust you. So it seems like most people, the statistics are they drop off after maybe the fourth time or third time of seeing someone. They're just like, oh, well, they're not giving me business or, you know, maybe they don't, they kind of forget about them. And it's really important to keep that rapport going and, you know, make fun of it, meaning enjoy it, go out and meet people and, you know, put a smile on your face and be happy and, uh, you know, just make, make it an enjoyable experience for yourself. So, um, yeah, the, the sixth thing here is quality assurance and compliance. So this is being sure that you're hiring quality caregivers, quality office staff, that you have all of your ducks in a row as far as the compliance side. You know, ADP is one of our preferred partners that we use. They have an HR component, so they keep track of all the labor regulations and everything. Um, you know, I know like, for example, I'm here in California, they came out with California launched 2000 new labor regulations just this year, January one. So ADP is tracking all that to make sure that all the policies and everything is up to date. So you're, you know, in compliance. So that's, that's just important to just, you know, be sure that all of your ducks are in a row. And then also the, when it comes to quality assurance for the caregivers, it's simply checking in with the families, seeing what they Uh, like about the caregiver if there's anything that you can do to adjust you know anything if they have any complaints or um, if they are happy you know that's great just hearing them out is important so just checking on the quality of the care that you're sending out is really important and then the seventh thing here is financial management so you know keep a close eye on the revenue coming in how much you're paying out in payroll how much you're paying out in marketing uh, you know, even what you're pulling for your own, say, salary or your own expenses. And, you know, there is a point where you'll be bringing in more revenue than like you you could possibly scale crazy. Like I remember even with Golden Age Companions, we went at one point during COVID from 5000 a week billing to 52000 a week in less than four months. So when that there's different challenges that showed up with that for example our payment processor they were starting to hold funds because we were processing so much money through every week they're like this business is just growing crazy so they started to flag it as high risk and then that's just getting on the phone talking to someone explaining you know that you're a home care agency they they tend to understand what the business is after you do that and then they'll unlock um you know, the processing caps. So these are all things that I've been through and me and my team at Home Care Agency Blueprint, all of our coaches here, uh, I'm still hands-on with all of our clients. So as you grow and scale your home care agency and your client with us, we are there to help navigate those things with you. So that's just something that is, is just people don't even think about, but it's, it's just part of running a business, but you know, these are like good problems to have. So now I want to, those are like the seven main things. And the last kind of thing I want to end with is one of our successful, I want to give an example of, I'm going to call her Jane. I, for Hippolyte, cannot say her exact name, but she is essentially an RN. 
Uh, she is on the East Coast, and we have launched her home care agency. And in just less than six months, she already has seven clients, and she basically is able to scale back her RN work and just work a couple days a week. And now she is running her home care agency, and she's actually running the business with her mom. So she's super excited about, you know, the results she got from Home Care Agency Blueprint. She did do our done for you package, and we were able to apply for a license, get it approved, and you know she was able to she she because she's an RN is is integrated in the healthcare field. She already had some contacts, so it was pretty easy for her to pick up the phone and. Without conflict of interest, she didn't have to go through the facility she works at. She just knows other people in the field, and she was able to do that, and then go to some, you know, networking events from the chamber. And over time, like initially, the first couple months, she wasn't getting any referrals. She was getting discouraged, and you know,、uh, we basically just said, "Look, you got to keep staying consistent and getting out there." and You know, there's one point she got three referrals in like two weeks. So now, you know, once when the referrals start coming through, it's holding your integrity, providing the quality care that you're set out to do, and you know, you, you most people getting this business, you have a heart for it. There's a reason why you want to do this. I know with this RN, she did not like seeing the care that she was witnessing in her facility. She was noticing that. There was only, say, per patient. There was barely anybody available to really take care of these these、uh, elderly in the in the facility, and they weren't being tended to. And it's just like substandard care. And so she thought, I want to start up my own home care business because I want to provide quality care one on one and really help people stay in their homes. And it's just so important to do that because. The quality of life when you're in your own home is wh- whatever age you're at. I mean, it's you're gonna have a higher quality of life when you're in your own familiar surroundings than when you're in a stale facility somewhere. It's just it's a fact. If you research it online, anyone knows. I mean, if you're watching this video, you probably already work in healthcare. You know, you understand.、Um, that's why I started Golden Age Companions because my grandmother at 90 years old went into. A facility, and she was there for three weeks, and she passed away. And they literally just medicated her until,、um, just because she was restless, she wanted to leave. She was trying to pull her IVs out. She was trying to get out of the hospital bed, and、um, they didn't know what else to do than just give her more medications. But see, my like argument to this day is, if they weaned her off those medications safely. And they were able to get her back home safely. They still there's still some medications that might be need like are necessary, but、um, you know she did have a version of dementia, so it's not like she was like in perfect health. You know she was 90 years old, but at the same time, she didn't need to just have all these medications you know pumped into her. I mean to the point where she couldn't even move. It was just like it was so disheartening. I mean I remember I went there. Three days before she passed away, and she she just like barely had any water next to her, and you know I know they're just giving her so so much medications, and there's nothing I could do about it.、Um, unfortunately, I didn't have power of attorney. I was only 19 years old, so there's nothing I could do about it. There was stuff in our family that there's a disagreement that the other part of my family felt it was best she was there, and I was just like, well, I I I can't really do anything, so. I I could not see her like that anymore. I knew she was about to be passing any day, and yeah, three days after she passed.、Um, so yeah, that's kind of like my tangent of why I got into the business. But you know, like after about six months after that, I knew I want to start my very own home care agency, and I want to help people,、um, these seniors that can no longer help themselves, be in their homes and have a quality.、Uh, As as quality living as they possibly can with quality care, and I know my grandmother likely would have lived at least another year, maybe two more years, if she was in her own home. So, you know, I just you got to have a heart and a passion for this business. If you just want to get into this business, just kind of like for the money, and it's oh, it's lucrative, and I can just bill thousands of, then I would not recommend. 
I mean, there's no reason to get into any business if it's just about the money. So we, everyone knows that that's not, you know, like it's not sustainable. So if you really have a heart in this business and you want to get into it, like I, this RN, she's so successful because she literally said, I don't even care about the money. I want to help these seniors and she's getting referrals. Like it's because the vibe, you know, her heart, it comes across like this is what, um, our businesses and, you know, like her being an RN really helps because she has those back end credentials that families like. They like that the, this company's owned by an RN. If you're not an RN, that's okay too. Remember, I started Golden Age Companions when I was 21 years old. So I was literally working at, I was seriously working at Starbucks when I started it. And that was really hard for me because I had to go like out to, I went to physical therapists and stuff. I was too nervous initially to go to hospitals, but I went to PTs. I went to some hospice companies and yeah, people would look at me like, you know, you're like, you know, my coworker's son or something like they, they did not take me seriously, but I finally got into a physical therapist and they loved me and they were sending me referrals. So, um, one of the clients that, that they did send was with us for over eight years. So it was pretty amazing. Alrighty, so that's um that's my thing and thank you for coming to my channel today and please check out more of my videos. I am committed to providing value. I will continue to post periodic videos on things that I feel that uh, you know need to get out there for information on home care. And if you are interested in working with us at Home Care Agency Blueprint, there is a link in the description below. So please click that link and book a call. You will either get my team or me directly, uh, depending on the schedule that the time that you choose and you will meet me. So, um, I am looking forward to, if you're interested in starting a home care agency, I really look forward to talking to you. All right. Take care. Thanks.